much. God bless you guys. Uh, hopefully you are nestled snug in your house while the storm's raging. And uh, we're, of course, we're, we're recording this before the storm hit. And uh, so hopefully we're nestled snug in our house while the storm is raging also. I do miss you guys, and I wish that we could assemble on Sunday. But praise God that we have this opportunity that we can worship the Lord together. And uh, so this morning, as the songs play, I do hope that you'll sing unto the Lord. I hope that you'll take your Bible and you'll be a part of right now the scripture reading. I hope that uh, you'll be a part of also the, um, the, the sermon later on that you'll follow right along, trusting for the Lord to bless us. He does say where two or three are gathered, and while we're not gathered together in the building, I do believe that we can continue in one accord, in one spirit, in one mind, striving together for the work of the ministry. So let's uh, right now uh, look to the screen, and we'll recite Isaiah 25 together, just some awesome verses that uh, I went and, and searched for the word storm in the scriptures, really, because, right? And so I found Isaiah 25, uh, really some wonderful praise. And let's read this unto God. Isaiah 25. O Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name. For thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. Therefore... Shall the strong people glorify thee? The city of the mighty nations shall fear thee, for thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat, when the blast of the mighty ones is as a storm against the wall. Praise God, we serve an awesome and mighty God. And I know this, uh, written by Isaiah, is something that uh, he and us, we can resonate where there's a storm going on right now. But, you know, I've been seeing people on Facebook say, like, a hurricane in 2020 kind of seems like normal compared to everything else going on. And really, pay attention. It says the blast, the hurricane from the mighty ones is as a storm. And uh, really, it's like what the world brings against us feels a lot heavier and a lot more threatening than even a, a Category 1 hurricane. Praise God. He's our shadow. Praise God. Now, let's uh, let's sing together. Really, take a sip of your coffee. Wake up. Uh, tighten your tie. I'm sure you all got dressed up for church this morning. But let's sing unto the Lord together.
we have a few announcements this morning. As we meet at home, we still have a full week of stuff going on. And so as we've been announcing the last couple of weeks, we have the Annex Project Party is this coming Wednesday at 6 o'clock. And we're going to be having a taco bar uh, for food, uh, dinner first. And then we're going to be following that up with finishing up some of the projects that we have around the Annex. And that begins at 6 o'clock. If you are available to bring some desserts, we do have some need for that. And if you just uh, send Lee a text or a message on Facebook or whatever, let her know that that's something that you'd be willing to bring this coming Wednesday at 6 o'clock. We'd appreciate it. Bring your paint clothes. We're going to have a great time fixing up the annex and, uh, and working through that. We have our summer series continues Sundays at 5 o'clock, and we're going to be doing our best to get that up tonight. Um, if not, it will be up uh, tomorrow, probably Monday, and um, we're going to post that right at 5 o'clock as well, so you'll have that available. Um, we weren't ex I wasn't expecting to have to record it, and so uh, I might be a little bit behind, but I'm going to do my very best to get that up, uh, posted at 5 o'clock tonight, and uh, we'll let um, especially the regulars know uh, what's going on. We'll send that out uh, via Facebook and, and text message and stuff. But we're going through the history of why we use the New Testament, and this week we're going to be looking at uh, why the eyewitnesses, like the eyewitness accounts, are reliable. And so I hope that you join us for that in our summer series on apologetics. And uh, we've been having a great time with that and uh, plan on tuning into that. If you can't make it tomorrow night, during the week, we'll have that posted. Our Bible tra translator, uh, Lloyd Haman, is coming on August 30th. And he is going to Tibet to translate the, the Bible. And so we're looking forward to hearing from him, hearing about his heart. Uh, for the ministry that he has in Tibet. And so plan on, on joining us on August 30th, and that's a Sunday service, um, for, for his visit, and we're going to have a great time. Our revival meetings are coming up in September, beginning September 13th, and going through the 16th. Mark that off on your calendar. Make sure that you plan to attend. Um, things come up last minute, and if we don't plan on being there, then we may not uh, be ready for it. And begin to pray on what God would do in your heart, what God would do in our evangelist, Brother Getch's heart, as he comes uh, to share God's message for our church on the 13th of September, which is just over a month away. Our midweek Bible study is Wednesdays at 7 here in the Annex, and so um, continue to uh, be faithful to that. And if you've missed out on that, you can catch up with that online. Uh, we're begin heading into Acts 7, uh, finishing Acts 16, because we didn't finish it last week. Our Anchored Kids classes meet at 10 and 5 on Sundays, and uh, on Sunday morning and Sunday evening. And so they've been having a great time going through the Answers in Genesis curriculum in the evenings, um, and then uh, going through uh, the gospel through scriptures is what they're going through in the uh, Sunday morning class. And I know that that's been a blessing as well. If you are interested in our small group discipleship, we've been announcing this for a couple of weeks, but that's because we really want everyone to know about it. And our small group discipleships uh, meet in a home, your home, our home, someone's home. And uh, we just have a great time uh, going through the scriptures, going through the basics of our Christian faith so we can know more about what we believe in. And if that's something that you're interested in, let us know. Talk to Pastor or myself, and we would love uh, to co cover that. In Romans chapter 12, we have our Bible reading for this morning. And so if you have your Bibles uh, with you, sitting there with you, turn to Romans chapter 12. And we're going to read just a few verses this morning, verse, uh, beginning in verse number 9, for the text for the, the scripture reading this morning. The Bible says, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of the saints, given to hospitality. Let's open our service in prayer. Dear God, we come before you, and Lord, we just thank you uh, that we can uh, have the ability to meet even in the midst of storms. God, I just pray that you would um, have your hand in each home this morning and across our state and across our nation, as many meet in homes, that you would be with them. Lord Jesus, we love you, and Lord, we pray your blessing on our service. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. <laughs>
Well, if you've got your Bible, we're in Romans chapter number 12. Romans chapter number 12, we're going to be looking at just one paragraph, verses 9 through 13, and it is really chock full. And uh, so let's take a moment and ask the Lord for His blessing. And let me just encourage you, pause the video right now and really go to the Lord in prayer on your own. All right, let's pray together. Father, we thank you and praise you for your goodness to us. And uh, Lord, I pray that you would speak to us. Lord, I thank you for using this passage to work in my heart. And I pray, Lord, that uh, as, I, as I consider the storm that has uh, been out there, Lord, and has caused us to change plans and so forth, I am far more aware of the storm that is within me, Lord. And uh, would you please uh, work your Holy Spirit in my heart. Calm that storm that is within me. I pray. Father, that uh, you would anoint our church by your grace and uh, that we would be fervent in our pursuit of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, thank you for the privilege it is to open the Bible this morning. Thank you for these uh, songs that uh, minister to us and minister to you. And uh, Lord, it's a privilege to be your minister and in Christ's name. Amen. The life of a Christ follower is all about the Holy Spirit radically transforming us from the inside out. The life of a Christ follower is all about the Holy Spirit of God radically transforming us from the inside out. Romans 12, this very passage that we're in today, begins uh, with this statement that uh, in verse 2 says, Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And really I think what that means is, is that when the Holy Spirit's in, it just revolutionizes what we consider to be our imagination, the way that we think, the way we process, uh, the way that we can even really envision God it, through our imagination. And, and the Lord works within us to transform us in that regard, transform by the renewing of your mind. And so let us give our imaginations over to God as we walk through this particular passage. Let's be seeking Him, Lord, uh, would you change me so that my thought processes line up with this passage right here today? And our, sing, our, our sermon text is actually just a single paragraph. It's a bunch of little phrases, and uh, in a way, it's similar to reading Proverbs, you know, a little bit, of, uh, a, a nugget here, a tidbit here, and we're kind of picking this up along the way, and kind of depending on how you would split this up based on punctuation and so forth, you could find 30 different statements that go from chapter 12 and into chapter 11. And so we're taking this one paragraph kind of just right in the middle of this rapid-fire succession from the Apostle Paul. Now, I, as an opening case, I want you to think for a moment. Uh, if I gave my children 30 instructions, okay, how many could I expect to get done, you know? If I just rapid-fire like Paul does here in this text, and I said, all right, I want it done by the time I get home, you know, and then I'm out the door, it's like, you know, maybe I could expect 10% completion, right? Maybe, maybe. And, uh, and, and, and yet, kind of, we would expect that there's 30 areas where we do expect obedience from our children. Over the years, we would say that there has been training that's taken place, uh, molding the character of, of these people and, and, and our children. And, and we think, yeah, there's definitely been 30 areas where I've expected obedience, and the Lord does of us as well. And yet, it's not going to happen with that. Uh, you know, just a 15 second visit to a passage because really it wouldn't take us long if we were going through our, our Bible uh, reading schedule to just read over these statements and think, okay, God wants me to be a good person and then I move on. But rather if we give it the meditation that we ought to, I do think we would be internally transformed. Okay, if I'm just visiting it and I'm just off, even in a 30, 30 minute sermon, I don't really know if that's enough time of meditation for us to be transformed like we ought to be. So, uh, realistically, when I visit this passage, what I see is that concept of continuing. And today we're continuing our continuing series. And this word has brought me here in verse number 12, and it says continuing instant in prayer. And really, I think that's that key to revolutionizing our imaginations. It's the key to uh, refocusing my heart 
and uh, getting me where I ought to be so the Holy Spirit can do his work through me. Continuing in prayer means continuing in a yielded life to God. And as a result, uh, we would see the fruit that is listed here. Uh, when I consider these passages, I think about how similar uh, you know, the, the lists are in the New Testament concerning fruits of the Holy Spirit. And that's what we can expect when I spend time with him, there will be fruit. See, according to what I see, uh, observe in this passage, the power of the Christian is his prayer, and the product, then, is love. This is super great. You're going to love this passage as we break it down today. The power is the prayer. That's what's uh, uh, able to make production and, and, and produce the fruit, but the, pr the product is love, and that's what we're going to see today. That's the real essence of this passage. God expects me, you might, if you're taking notes, write this down. God expects me to produce love that is powered by Him. He expects me to produce love. And, and, and realistically, like all of these little nuggets that we're going to read here, it's all about our love. And yet, it's not a carnal love. It's not a love that can be produced by Josh. It's a, it's a product of God Himself. Romans chapter number 12, beginning in verse 9, the Bible says, Let love be without dissimulation, or in other words, hypocrisy. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good, be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love, in honor, preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation. Continuing instant in prayer. Distributing to the necessity of saints given to hospitality. So we see uh, this, this concise paragraph of many different statements. And this paragraph begins by saying, let love be without dissimulation. I do see the word simulation in there. And in other words, uh, uh, the definition of this word teaches us to let love be authentic. Let love be genuine, let love be authentic, let love be without hypocrisy. Uh, and then what happens is this: the scripture here reveals how that authentic love is demonstrated. It's, we're revealed to, it's revealed to us how this authentic love, the expectation is set out there, but then it's also demonstrated for us. I mean, look at verse number 9. We cling, notice the word cling, we, or cleave, we cling to what we love, don't we? Verse 10, we see the word prefer. We prefer what we love. Verse 11, we're fervent about what we love. Verse 12, we do give plenty of time in rejoicing in what we love. And verse 13, we are uh, given to those things or those people that we love. So you see uh, how when it, when it says give preference and cleave and, and uh, you know, prefer, like, we do this when we love something. I don't have to force myself to prefer those things that I love. And that's how simple this is. It's one paragraph. It begins by saying, love authentically. Then it tells us what authentic love is and what authentic love does. So let's see if we can't take this list here of Christian fruit and then discern God's will for us. And let me, let me encourage you to pray. Okay? Ask for the transformative grace of Jesus, because what happens in my heart is I look at lists like this in the Bible and I realize, boy, do I fall short of that. And so I need transforming grace. Ask for the fruit. When you come to stuff like this in the Word of God, the whole, the whole idea is when I open the Bible, I'm hearing God speak to me, and He's telling me how I ought to pray. And I look at this and it says, be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love. And I ought to be praying, oh Lord, Lord, give me this brotherly love that I might be kindly affectioned to others. So I took this passage and I consolidated this paragraph uh, for our benefit, for our understanding, and uh, remember that, that the power is of the Holy Spirit and the product is love. Powers of the Holy Spirit, the product is love. And uh, three concepts that I draw from this are the concepts faithful, fervent, and fellowship. Faithful, fervent, and fellowship. Faithful, well, because love is consistent. Love continues, as we see here, continues. Love cleaves. 
Love is patient in tribulation. Love is faithful. I also noticed some other terms that draw me to the word fervent because love is without dissimulation. Love is authentic. It's fervent. Uh, love is honorable. Love is uh, fervent. It, there's the very word fervent. It says we're fervent in spirit. Okay, rejoicing in hope. Love serves God and love serves men. Love is fervent. I also consider that term fellowship. And that's because love shares. Love is faithful in that it continues. Love is fervent in, in that it uh, puts its whole heart into the matter and, and loves God and loves others. Uh, but then we also see fellowship. Love is fellowship because love shares. Love shares in the blessings and love also shares in the trials. See what it says here? It cleaves to that which is good. It shares in the blessings, cleaving to that which is good. Um, it is kindly affectioned. It is given to hospitality. Love is fellowship. So realistically, I think if we wanted to sort of organize uh, or simplify, if we wanted to simplify this passage, we could maybe take like three containers, maybe three buckets. We could label them faithful and fervent and fellowship. And then we could take these little statements out of the scriptures and drop them into their respective buckets. And uh, then we can also see in doing so how true love is faithful. True love is fervent. Check it out. Love is faithful and fervent in fellowship. Uh, so I'm drawn to, uh, I'm told here to love God. I'm told here to love man. I'm told to be fervent in doing so, putting my spirit into it, putting my heart into it, and then also to be faithful and do that day after day. And I think that uh, this helps us to organize these thoughts and I want you to consider something as I consider that love is faithful and fervent in fellowship. Think about that maybe this Wednesday we have that uh, project party over at the Annex. See, we're going to be sharing in love while we are sharing the blessings of a taco buffet. And we're also sharing in that toil of the labor. It is a real blessing. It isn't a great joy. I could have, uh, uh, you know, told everyone, hey, we're going to have a work day. And sort of like, well, I don't really know if I want to go to a work day. But then, just by adding something like the blessing of dinner, oh, that sounds wonderful. We get to share in the fellowship of the blessing, as well as in the labor. And I think, truly, that is, that fellowship gets both ends of it, uh, both sides of the coin. Uh, as our church continues in love and fellowship, we are sharing in both blessings and in struggles. See, when, when Leah married me, I heard her. She was standing straight across from me, only four feet away. I know, I heard her clear as day. She made a vow that she would love me for better or worse, right? Sickness and health in taco bars and in painting. Okay, get it, right? She vowed to fellowship in the blessings and in the trials. No, taco bars were not in our vows, but they should have been. Amen. Uh, I'm afraid... Uh, that when I consider uh, the experience of our, you know, four-year-old church, too many Christians aren't at a level of commitment to our Lord as is required in fellowshipping in his sufferings. So that's sort of the whole idea is like, I'll fellowship with Jesus in the blessings but when it comes to fellowshipping and his sufferings, I'm not so sure about that. See, there, there is no lack of Christians that can get excited about attending a new church and, and attending in their fellowship for like a year. But it's that common person who goes through like the 14-week curriculum, you know, and they help renovate an annex for four months. And then they, you know, they enjoy a church in the park for 10 weeks and then they fizzle out. It becomes all too common. It's like you got that one year mark with most people. They come in there and for about three, four, five months, they're just really like uh, on fire. And then you have a remaining seven, eight, nine months and it's, it's like, you know, they've lost heart and all these things. And then before you know it, uh, they're just gone all together. Moving on to that next situation thinking, well, the grass is greener on the other side. Probably, if we're being honest, our churches are being filled with people who are in love with their own experiences. Or at best, they're in love with the idea of God, but they're not in love with God. 
See, being powered by prayer, being transformed by the Holy Spirit, uh, creates the product of love that isn't meant to be for just a year, right? I mean, a year is about how long the novelty lasts. A year is about the duration of your average church attender, okay? But who on earth would define me as being faithful to anything, you know, just in, in lasting for a year, okay? Um, who would be impressed by somebody who, you know, has like the new job every single year? Or they change locations every single year. And, and, and when we consider this idea of, of commitment and faithfulness, friends, we have to have that uh, duration, that longevity in our life. A year is about as long as novelty might last, but nobody's going to uh, define us as being faithful if we're just in it uh, for a matter of months. See, I'll, I'll, I'll preach this concept to the day I go home because the Bible says it's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Faithful. Man, I, you would think I'm an idiot if I pastored a church uh, for like a year and moved on and claimed to be faithful. Okay, you would think I was an idiot if I found a new church to pastor every single year. Love is faithful and fervent in its fellowship, recognizing I can be fervent in the blessings, but I've got to be fervent in the sufferings as well. Okay? Fellowship in the blessings. Yeah, you are a child of God. Yeah, you're an heir to the throne of grace. Yes, you are his image bearer. I mean, like, everything that Jesus has in the Father, you have in the Father. And yet, everything that Jesus had in this world, you have in this world. Get it? Like, we get everything in the next world that Jesus gets. We get everything in this world that Jesus got. They hung Jesus on the cross. Uh, what Christ had in this world was temptation, abandonment, opposition, and slander. So, you know, don't, don't have the expectation that we get to have fellowship with Jesus in blessings, but then not in the trial. Don't expect that uh, when I walk into Christianity and maybe, you know, I'm going to get this fresh new baptism, a fresh new church attendance, a uh, fresh new small group or whatever the case is, I'm going to do this discipleship thing here or there. Um, and, 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 you know, don't go on saying, God is good all the time on Sunday. And then on Monday, you know, suspect that the rapture is coming just because uh, you're finding in the world exactly what Jesus had in the world. We've got to steal ourselves, Christian. Yeah, the rapture is closer than it's ever been. That's kind of just basic logic, isn't it? And yet, should the Lord tarry, we need some Christians who are going to be faithful until he comes. We fellowship in the sufferings. When the church is rejected by the world, we are fellowshipping in Christ's sufferings. But we fellowship in the blessings. You, you get both. You have to have both, and you can't abandon the call. We are fervent. We are faithful in the fellowship with God. So let's do this quickly. I, wanna, I do want to sort of outline this passage. I want to kind of tuck these away in their respective uh, containers. And let's outline that love I see here that is uh, faithful and fervent in its fellowship. And then let's commit to continuing instant in prayer. First of all, love is faithful. Love is faithful. You'll notice that verse 9 says, Let love be without dissimulation. Remember, remember, that means let love be authentic without hypocrisy. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Verse 12. Patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Now, I want you to take a moment to assess your love for God. Assess your love for God and then honestly determine if it is indeed authentic. How is your private worship? How is your love of Scripture? And how is your prayer life? Take, take an assessment of these things and, and, and honestly determine. If my love has dissimulation, it means it looks one way on Sunday and it looks another way in the week. 
if, if, if I have if I have hypocrisy in my love, it's like in church, you know, I'm trying to convince everyone of my love for God, but then throughout the week I'm really giving my heart and soul over to someone or something else. Do you love God throughout the week as you love Him on Sunday morning? Probably we could just leave that sermon right here to consider, is my love without hypocrisy? I mean, the conviction is heavy, heavy right there. Let me ask you again, is your love for God authentic? Or are you a hypocrite? See, the Christians who flake out after a year, they're doing so because they left their first love. They came into the church loving the experience. They came into the church loving self or loving novelty or loving maybe even the education, uh, maybe hearing some new things from a different uh, preacher, a different point of view. But that's a lot different than loving God. And so the reason that the Christian fizzles out, the reason that Christians are just kind of uh, sitting back during this time of crisis in our country is because they've left their first love. The reason that they get bitter and that they lash out on Facebook, the reason that we bicker and the, the reason that uh, we, we are expressing all, all manner of, of ungodliness is because we've left our first love. It's like Demas who, forsake, who forsook the faith for the love of the present world. See, he loved, he loved, he gave his heart to something else. He lost his fervency, so he lost his faithfulness. He lost his fervency, so he lost his faithfulness. Is your love faithful and authentic, or are you cheating on God? See, there's some 20 times in the Old Testament that God had said, Israel went whoring after idols. In other words, they were unfaithful. They became whores in their relationship with God. Church, stay faithful. Check yourself, friend. Okay, Is your heart stirred up to go chasing after something or someone else? Is there a growing sense of misery in your heart that you're seeking to cure with an earthly device? Stir up your faithful heart. Do you have tribulation? Certainly so. He says, be patient in tribulation. In this world, we suffer. Be patient in tribulation. Be faithful in tribulation. Do not quit on God. So what I, I you look, sometimes it's tribulation that gets us off course. Sometimes it's success that draws us away. And whether it's success or tribulation that's drawing you from Christ, you need to immediately call on the Holy Spirit. You need to preach to yourself the gospel of Jesus. You need to uh, call a friend and ask, how can I get back? How can I rekindle a love for Christ if, if I allowed it to be set on lesser things? I mean, what do I do if I've fallen in love with the idols of this world, such as success or recreation or lust or self-image? Remember Revelation 2. Revelation 2, the church of Ephesus. Jesus told them, thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent and return to thy first works. Remember, repent, and return. Remember, repent, and return. This is true because, as Jesus says, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Faithful love will follow your faithful actions. Because even when we don't feel it, love is faithful. I'm not going to feel faithful every day. But if I'm loving God, loving Him is faithfulness. Faithfulness is love. Okay. Uh, secondly, I, I see that love is fervent. Notice verse 11, it says, we're not slothful, we're not lazy in business, we're fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope. See, the, the word fervent, it means boiling hot. Boiling hot. And uh, it's used in Acts 18 of a preacher by the name Apollos. Apollos, this guy with the name of a, a pagan god born into the Gentile world. Uh, he was born again into Christ, and he preached, the Bible says he preached with fervency. And this is intense, man. I mean, I, I've seen the I've Paul uh, minister. I, I've read Paul's biography. Okay, I've seen Stephen martyred for the faith. That seemed fervent. I've seen Barnabas sacrifice for others. I mean, I've watched the men throughout the scriptures abandon their livelihoods to follow Christ. And yet, only Apollos is described with the word fervent. I mean, how fiery must this guy have been? 
I imagine his his preaching to be that impassioned, intense style. He probably demonstrated that concept that somebody came up with when they coined the phrase, uh, set yourself on fire and people will show up just to watch you boom. I imagine Apollos was one of those burning lights. See, the Lord, all the way back in the Garden of Eden, the Lord gave Adam a wife to teach him the concept of a fervent love. A ravishing love. Okay? And in, in Proverbs 5, that concept's laid out for us. In Proverbs chapter 5, it, it tells us, be ravished with your wife. The very next verse says, why would you be ravished with a stranger? Okay? And that's this whole idea. That's always the temptation. The temptation is always, the, the nature of your flesh is just crying out, the grass is greener on the other side. But uh, consider this for a moment. Christ Jesus is fervent about you. Jesus loves you. I mean, seeing and knowing all your flaws, Jesus is passionate about you. Uh, let, let's do something interactive, right? Maybe you go ahead and text me. We're, we're online and we can't really fellowship necessarily, but I want you to do something. No matter like when you're watching this, Text, text me, text me, or, or text the church number if you don't have mine. Text me something about how the Lord has loved you lately. Text me how God has loved on you, and, and how are you aware today of the love of Christ? And I'll just say that the Lord has, has blessed me today with this day at home. As much as I desire to be with the congregation today and fellowship with you all and sing with you all, I also sense the love of God in a Sabbath rest. Okay, the, 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 the Bible says that the, the Lord gives his beloved sleep. It gives, it gives his children rest. What a, what a blessing from the Lord. And see, if we pause long enough and think on that, it's like, man, wow, God loves me. And could we just let the love of Christ sink in? Let the love of Christ hit home. That despite the ways that you know we chased after other idols this week, despite the ways that I am just imperfect and flawed and, and sinful and, and fragile, He loves me. Now let, let's let the love of Christ sink in for a minute. That love that you don't deserve, but by grace you get. And let that love set our hearts straight. I don't have to look at this list and think, okay, here's my to-do list. If I do 30 things in order, then God will love me. No, 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 no. It's like God loves me, and when I'm dwelling on that, and when I'm you know, living in my gospel identity and allowing his love to transform me, this stuff's going to happen. This fervent and faithful and fellowship love, it's going to happen. Don't don't just give God the leftovers. Let's not cheat on Him. You know, He loves us. It's like, as the proverb was saying, uh, be ravished with the love of your wife. Why go seeking the love of strangers? Be ravished with the love of Christ. Why go seeking after strangers? Jesus loves me. He loves me. Don't give Him the leftovers. Don't give Him the obligation. Give Him fervency. Love is fervent. And thirdly, Love is fellowship. Love is fellowship. Now, verse 10, it says, Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. So what we can see clearly is that our love for God influences our love for mankind. The vertical relationship will always impact our horizontal relationships. Uh, what, when we see the saints in need, uh, a heart like Jesus gives. Uh, as, as the Christian gives from a heart of love. The Bible says, as a man purposes in his heart, so let him give. For God loves a cheerful giver. Uh, giving is the result of an overflowing love. We could say that the giving is a measure of our heart's love. It's the thermometer. The thermometer that gauges our heart's fervency. The thermometer measuring the heat of my heart, the heat of my love. It's really like the assessment of my giving. Where am I giving to? That's where I'm loving, maybe into this person, into that home, into myself, into God, right? So we, we 
can kind of look because we know where your treasure is, there goes your heart also, and we pay attention, where, where am I giving? And that would be the measure of my love. See, uh, nobody forces grandparents to give to their grandbabies. Like, I try to force my parents from, you know, from giving. I try to stop them from giving to my kids. But you can't, you can't. And you know also, a, a mother in love with her child just gives life and limb you can give without loving, but you can't love without giving. Church, be admonished here. Loving the brethren might might mean loving within the local church, but it also may mean loving our brethren around the world. The love of God may compel you to locally give. It may lead you to globally give. See, we have a missions project coming soon. You can get a part of that. You can pour your heart into giving uh, around the world, and maybe... God brings something to your attention here in our own mission field. Loving means, fellowship means sharing in the blessings, sharing in the sufferings, sharing life. Love is being faithful and fervent in fellowship. Really, that's what this whole list boils down to. And yet, this is, this is only possible if we're continuing in the Holy Spirit. And the way that we continue in the Holy Spirit is in prayer. Seeking the ear of God. Seeking the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, continuing in prayer. So wherever you're, wherever you're at in your walk with Christ today, would you take the time now, uh, lay out the scriptures before you, ask the, the Spirit to speak to you. Okay, listen to the Lord, really, truly. Sometimes we just pray without listening, but but let's let's listen to the Lord, understanding how He wants me to pray, how I should speak, and then. You know, ask the Spirit to speak to me so that I might speak back to Him. Maybe you would pray Romans 12. Maybe you'd get through this and, and see, Lord, I, I need to continue in brotherly love, and Lord, I ask you to equip me to do so. Maybe you'd pray a psalm today. But listen to God so that we know how to speak to God. Stoke that relationship. Get back here when we're in the Scriptures. We're saying, wow, I have a God who loves me. Uh, asking Him to revive me, to revitalize my love, asking the Holy Spirit to bear this fruit in my life. I mean, stoke that relationship. See, we can take our times of Sabbath rest that the Lord gives us, and we could, you know, we're just wasted on screen time, or we could revive. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's how this whole thing began. Continue with Him, continue in prayer, uh, and rekindle your love. Let uh, you and I seek the Holy Spirit to radically transform us from the inside out. Fellowshipping with Him in faithful fervency. God bless you. Hey church, God bless you guys. If you're watching this uh, during the weekend that we've posted it, you know full well that we've got this hurricane situation. And yet it, it really is like a blessing in disguise that we get to take some time of rest today. And I'm thankful that we can have this technology that allows us to fellowship in the Word digitally. And I want to encourage you to reach out digitally and uh, just continue the, the fellowship. So, hey, text me if you would or maybe share something into the Facebook group. Talk to the church um, by way of commenting on YouTube or commenting on Facebook or texting me, you can use my number, you can use the church number, you can text, um, and, and let or email. And let's just uh, stay in fellowship in this way. Uh, also, you're certainly welcome to uh, to give unto the Lord digitally as well. You can do that on the church website. So let's just continue in our faithfulness unto the Lord. And I want you guys to know that I love you deeply. And uh, uh, a Sunday away from the Vero Beach Baptist Church just doesn't feel like home to me. And I miss you all today. I love you greatly. And I'm praying for God's rich blessings upon you. And I thank you so much for being faithful unto the Lord. And we'll see you guys real soon.